This addressable LED board does more than just a light show demo. This board, sponsored by PCBWay, has eight digital logic inputs, eight addressable SK6812 mini LEDs, and these indicate whether the inputs are high or low. And it can also operate at 3.3 or 5 volt logic inputs. Often, I need a bank of eight or 16 LEDs just to show the output of something, whether it's a binary counter, an LED chaser, or just a bunch of signals I need a visual idea about. Every time I do that, I need to find a breadboard, wire up all the LEDs, and in this case, they also have transistor drivers because this was used on a 4000 series CMOS chip where the outputs can't drive an LED. There's not enough current. So I had to actually use a transistor driver. And another problem is if you wire this up for either common anode or common cathode so that an active high or low signal is set to turn on the light, if you now want to use that in a different circuit, you may have to flip all the LEDs around and remember which way to tie the common to get it all to work. Plus you're using up breadboards. And I've had these sitting aside for a couple of months now, and it's easier to just have a dedicated board. And if I want more than eight LEDs, I can just assemble a couple of these and put them side by side and have 16 LEDs. The design uses an ATtiny804. The eight inputs have FET level shifters where the board itself is set to run at five volts, which we provide on a header. But the VCC for the inputs has a separate VCC power header pin, and we provide either five or 3.3, depending on the levels we want here. So the board has to run at five volts because these addressable LEDs need five volts to operate reliably. And generally, if we're plugging this into an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or an ESP32 kind of module. Usually we're going to have five volts available anyway, so we can power the board from it. And whether the outputs from that module are 3.3 or five volt logic, we just provide five or 3.3 power for that. And because the FET level shifters have pull up resistors, by default when nothing is plugged in, as well as when the input is logic high, we will see a logic high. So that's why with nothing on the inputs, we're getting green lights here. So I have a ground wire. If I move that along the inputs, we can see the corresponding output turn off, showing logic high and logic low. If we use a voltmeter with nothing connected to the input, of course the board pulls it high. In this case, 3.3 volts, because that's what we're powering the VCC input from. When we bring an input to logic low, we get ground on that input. If I jumper the VCC -C power input over to 5 volts, now the board is powered from 5 volts, and the inputs are operating at 5 volt logic. So the input now is grounded still. If I double check, we have 1.8 millivolts, that's ground. If I remove the input ground, now we should see a five volt logic input, 4.7 volts because that's what we're actually powering the board with from the Raspberry Pi. So by changing the VCC power input voltage, we are making all the inputs either 3.3 or 5 volt compatible. And the ATtiny is always going to see 0 and 5 volt logic. So this board has the 8 input level shifters going to 8 inputs on the ATtiny 804. There's one data output pin going to the string of 8 addressable LEDs. SK6812 mini, so they are around 3.5 millimeter size. There's a UPDI programming header for the chip, and the data output from the chip has a series resistor to help minimize signal reflections and prevent voltage spikes from possibly damaging this first pixel. I have a mode select input switch that I can press to toggle between different modes of operation. And I have a configuration jumper input 
which we can look at. With the configuration jumper not installed, a logic high in gives me a green lit LED, and a logic low will just not turn on the LED at all, so it behaves more like a regular LED. But if I want a visual confirmation of when we do have a logic low in, and I want to use a color, I can press the mode switch once, and now logic high in is green, and logic low in goes red. So I can move the ground along the inputs, and they go from green to red instead of green to off. If I install the config jumper, it's going to invert this behavior. So now all the inputs with a logic high are showing red, and the one with a logic low is actually green. If I cycle back to the beginning, the ones with logic high are just off, and the one with a logic low is lit up green. So that's to invert the logic on the input in case we're trying to indicate not whether it's high or low, but whether the signal is asserted or not. For example, if we were monitoring a reset output from some circuit and that reset is active low to do the resetting, when the input on this board is high, the reset coming from elsewhere is not asserted, so we don't show activity. But when we go into reset and that input is going to go low, I'll use this ground wire, now the light comes on to show we've asserted that signal and that other board is in reset right now. So it's just a preference of how to represent. I usually just leave it directly showing high or low as green and red. And when I cycle through these modes, I get into this LED demo just to see if the board is working. And this comes from a default sketch in the Arduino IDE. Having a bunch of these around is going to be a very useful tool.